and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about an important concept in JavaScript called scope. Now, what is scope? Scope means variable access. What variables do I have access to when a code is running? So by default in JavaScript, you are in the root scope, which is the window object. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If in my console, I do something like function AA console.log test, and we close off that function. Well, now the function AA is part of the window scope. If I go window here and open up window, you'll see that the AA function has been added to the window scope. So when you're working in a browser, this is called the root scope. So the parent scope. Now, what if I do something like this? If I go function BB, and within this function, we'll do variable A equals hello. Well, this function, if I run this in the console, if I now do console.log A, will that work? No, because A only lives within function BB. The scope is inside of the function. So the only way we can do console log A is within the function to add, oops, let's try that again, within the function to add console log A. So now if I run the function, I have hello. Now, the interesting thing is that functions have access to any variable in the root scope. So for example, if I do variable B equals, can I access this? Well, function BB has access to this because as you know, window.bb exists and variable b lives on the window object. So they both have the same parent. Let me show you what I mean by copying this and putting it into the console. Now within function bb, if we do console.log b, well, we have access to this. Okay, what if I do something along the lines of variable B, can I access this? I do B equals hello. If I copy this, and now I do console.log B, well, I have, can I access this? Because I haven't ran the function. But if I run the function bb, now if I do console log variable b, I get hello because b is the same variable. Okay, let's do something a little bit more complex. So knowing what we know, we know that this is the root scope. In our case, it's the window. Within here, we can declare a variable, fun, we'll say equals five. And we'll also declare a function, we'll call it fun function. And within this function, as soon as we create these curly brackets, we've created a child scope in here. So within here, I'll say variable fun equals lu and we'll console log fun here. 
and we'll create another function, except this one we'll call funner function. And within this one, we'll say by, and we'll console log that. And then finally, we'll create a third function, and we'll call this the funnest function. And within here, we'll remove the variable, and we'll say, ah. And at the bottom, we'll also do console log fun. All right, so let's go over this. We're declaring a variable fun equals five. We've created three functions, and each of these functions create their own scope. And each of these functions console log fun. But what fun means in each one of them is different based on their scope. So the first one, we'll title it one, just so we know. The second, we'll say two. Third. And then finally here, we can just say window. So let's run this function and see what happens. See if you can guess what's about to happen here. OK, so we have window 5, which means this line over here. The fun variable is, well, 5. Nothing has been run. We read through the script, and we see that variable fun equals 5. And then we see these functions, but none of them are run. And now if I do fun function to actually run these, and we'll do funner function, and finally the funnest function. If I copy and paste this and rerun this, we see we have window 5, line 24 that got run, which is variable 5. Now, within the first function, we have the variable fun equals to hello because, well, we've created a new scope, and within this function lives variable fun that has hello. So that gets overridden. And then we have the second function that has by. Again, same thing as above, because we have a new scope, a new variable, fun equals by. And then the third one, we see that we have fun equals a. Ah. And again, that gets changed. And that equals to fun. Here's the fun part, though. If I now do console.log fun, it's now equal to a. Ah, because in the third function, we've modified fun, which is this variable, to equal to a. Ah. One thing I want to show you is that in the first two functions, I won't be able to access the fun variable in the root scope because I've essentially overridden them. Within the fun function and funner function, fun equals something that is their own meaning. So within this function, fun equals hello. Within the funner function, fun equals by. And no matter what, we won't have access to the root scope. And this is called a naming conflict, where we name things the same way as something that lives, let's say, in the parent scope, and we will lose access to it. So to finalize this point, let's just delete this and go over what's happening here. So let's delete this as well, and we'll say just the console log here. When somebody runs funnest function, we run this, and JavaScript reads console log fun. OK, fun. Do we, do we know her? And we look at the scope here. We look at this function. Hey, do you know what fun is? And the function says, well, sorry, friend. I don't really know fun, but ask my parent. So now we go into outside of the function, in this case, the root scope. Now we say, hey, do you know fun? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a variable fun. It equals five. So now console log can log five. But if fun doesn't exist, we ask the parent, and the parent says, sorry, I have no idea what fun is. 
then we get, well, we get an error. So the last check is always the root scope. In our case, the window object. If we can't find it, we get this error in the console we always see. Sorry, your friend variable doesn't exist. I think you made her up. And that's it for scope. Bye-bye.